Okay, so we're going to do some splitting. Just some things you want to keep in mind when you're splitting. When you're making a hatchet handle, axe handle, really any kind of handle, the grain, you can see the growth rings, should be in line with the tool itself in this direction here as best that you can. Um, obviously, this tree was fairly young, so the growth rings are actually fairly uh, tight radius. That's really not ideal. But if you compare it to the stuff that you buy at the hardware store, um, it's going to be much stronger than that. Not to mention, this is ash. Ash is traditionally a very good wood, a very strong wood for handles. It has a lot of uh, resistance to breaking. And the way that we're actually going to make this handle is we're going to retain the integrity of the wood by splitting it down the grain. So all of the grain, or very very close to all of the grain, is going to be in line with the handle uh, as well, which is not something you typically get when you buy from the hardware store either. If you don't have one of these, you can make one of these. The uh, plastic is a nylon, bought from a surplus store. Handle is just a piece of red oak. Well, actually, it might be white oak. It looks like white oak. And uh, this thing will last pretty much forever. I have just a kind of a random hatchet here. So you want to score uh, where you're going to be splitting first. So you actually create a bit of a, a weak spot. For the wood to split along. Uh, when you are splitting, you want to just keep in mind that the split's not going to necessarily go straight. You, you can possibly guide it a little bit, so leave a little bit extra just in case. Also, when you split, um, you really want to try and split halfway through. This is going to keep the grain on each side centralized uh, and make it more likely to actually make a straight split. If you don't, you're going to have more pressure from one side being applied to the other side uh, or than the other side. And what that's going to do is create a, a continuous um, bevel or continuous uh, line that's not quite straight. It, it is still very strong, but it won't give you the result that you're looking for. About halfway. Just gonna score. Nice big metal splitting wedge. If you don't have one of these, you can continue to use your hatchet or axe. It's uh, it's going to be more difficult without this. And uh, I wish it were a little bit wider. I had one more. I only have one right now. Uh, but you can see that uh, it has a little bit of wear and tear, but it's going to last. And um, the only issue with these is if you actually want to cut through, if there's some wood fibers left over, you want to cut through with some sort of woodworking tool. You have to be really careful, otherwise you're going to damage your woodworking tool with uh, with this wedge in there. Now if you were to use a wooden wedge, that wouldn't be the case. You can cut into it no problem. So that looks like a, a pretty good split. That's more or less what we were looking for. See here, the line is 
actually not straight at all. So um, if you're interested in, in watching some videos about how to correct that, you can watch a fellow by the name of Curtis Buchanan. He does, I believe it's Windsor Chairs on YouTube, and he has a very good technique um, with regards to splitting. So you can use a tool known as a fro and more or less guide it. I will show you my technique, which is nowhere close to compared to uh, nowhere close to as good as com compared to Curtis Buchanan. I think that's going to make it just a fine handle. You can see, uh, I couldn't control split well enough, and we have a smaller taper on the bottom, but uh, that actually may end up being the top. I'm going to be end up, um, this handle is way too long as it is. We really only need about 18 inches or so for that handle, maybe even a little less. So I think we can work with this material, and uh, we'll see how that goes. So I'm going to show you an example of some green woodworking. Um, what we're going to do is, rather than risk trying to take the material down to a really precise size by splitting, which is pretty risky if you're not, um, you know, you're not used to doing this often. Also, this particular piece has such odd grain that I can't predict, um, you know, how it's going to split from that perspective. So what I'm going to do is use the hatchet. Um, I'm going to use the one I was showing earlier in the videos, and this is the this is the grind that I was referring to, the, the back the grind on this surface is not typical for this type of a hatchet as comparison to this one. So this is what you typically see uh, when it was meant for hewing, when it was used for hewing. So this is still usable, uh, just not in the traditional way, and this handle is also not so traditional either. But uh, it does do the trick and it does come in handy for these types of projects. What I'm going to show you is that uh, we're going to take this material down in a safer way uh, fairly quickly. You know, um, remove some of this excess here. You can remove the bark fairly easily as well. And just keep in mind, you, you do want to keep this oversized. Uh, you don't want to take it down too close. So when you're doing any of this type of work, typically you score. Score. And then remove. Uh, part of the reason for scoring would be to act as a stopping point. So you don't want that material to continue to split in a direction that, um, that you don't necessarily plan on. So that that uh, cross cut, cross cut across the grain, will act as that stopping point and prevent the splitting from continuing. Um, there are other reasons for it. You know that's a really good reason. As you you can see the result, it's a very good result. Um, as far as green woodworking goes. So just keep in mind that shape will take a little bit more off in the same way. So here's where we're at, at this point. So clean up all the faces. I've taken the thickness down so that I can get closer to the, the final uh, dimensions that we're looking for. So I can give you a better idea how this is going to work out. I'll stand away from the camera a little bit. So hopefully you can you can see my hand will be away due to that curvature. I've left this a little bit longer than I would as well, but you need to account for the length of the eye, the uh, component that's going to go into the eye here. And then uh, we can chop off any excess. And of course, you, you don't really want to leave these ends. Typically, they're checked. I mean, they have small cracks. And I can show you a little close up of that just through the drawing process. You can see here some uh, small cracks. So you'd want to remove, typically, they're around two inches or so uh, from the end. We've got uh, two pieces to work with. We'll go over to the shave horse next and we'll start to refine them a little bit closer to the final shape. Obviously one longer than the other. One's for a larger head, one's for a smaller head. So I went to the trouble of cutting a small template, a little cardboard template. And that's the shape At of the eye. At this point, you don't need to make it so precise. You just need to make sure that 
you do not undersize the uh, this section uh, because there's a couple things that are going to happen. One is that the material will actually shrink. So this ash is about a year old or so, had been cut down about a year ago. So it has uh, quite a bit of moisture still in it. We have to dry it out and when it dries out, it's going to shrink. So definitely make sure that you don't undersize this, uh, otherwise you're going to be making a brand new handle uh, or buying one from the hardware store, which is exactly what we try to avoid. So uh, make it tight. Um, after you draw your line, make sure you stay away from the line, um, you know, even an eighth of an inch for now, up until you get that uh, the level of dryness that we're looking for. So um, let's get started on the shave horse. You can see in the background here. Okay, so take it down um, with the uh, draw knife on the shave horse. Most of the way, uh, making sure that we leave a little bit extra material in and around this area here. So there's a bit of a flare. It helps to, uh, to seat the head onto the hatchet handle. Um, down near the bottom, this is going to be the bottom, we'll have the same kind of idea. So there'll be a flare at the bottom, a flare in and around this section. Um, this area in, in here is going to be where you hold onto the handle, so you want a smaller area uh, for a good grip. Uh, and then again, small at the top. Make sure you leave enough length. So this, this hatchet handle is going to be very uh, small because the hatchet head is small. So I'll have a little bit extra material at the bottom here to cut off. Notice I'm coming in with the bevel side uh, down. That allows me to, to scoop with a defined starting point right in here. If you were to come in in this direction, it's very difficult to do that same thing. You want to dig in, you can see the result. You start digging in a lot further. So, anyway. If you haven't already watched the video, watch the video of the restoration of this spoke shave. Uh, you can see shortly how well it works. So I've taken it down about as far as I want to take it. Uh, this grain was very difficult on this side. It was back and forth constantly. Uh, the grain is going all over the place there. So not really ideal, but I kind of figured that that would be the case. Um, this side, on the other hand, was, was fine. No issues whatsoever. So next thing I want to do, because I'm going to be drying this um, in the oven. I've never done this before. And I don't know any other people that really, really have done this with a handle. It's probably not recommended is uh, I'm going to try and uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut this uh, for our wedge. Um, I may not cut it all the way down. What's gonna, what that's going to allow us to do is um, it's going to allow the airflow to get in there a little bit more easily and dry that section out quicker, uh, shrinking that down. So there's a couple of risks involved with that. Um, one is that when I start to fine tune this, it's not going to be as sturdy. So it's going to want to flex a little bit more. Uh, this is ash and when it's dry, it's going to be very strong and fairly resistant to flexing. It's not like something, uh, for example, pine that would flex very easily. So I think it's going to be okay. If it's not, I can shove a, a small piece of wood in there, uh, the same width of the curve cut, and uh, that will reinforce it temporarily until I'm done the, the final shaping. So just, uh, you can see, quick view. 
it's fairly close, you know, just a little less than an eighth of an inch probably um, away from that line. And then I can get fine tuning. And that goes down a little bit beyond the height of the ax head or the hatchet head. Okay, so I'll go ahead and do that. the current uh, status of the project. We have two handles at the same state. I've done a curve cut in uh, both handles and I have started the drawing process. Uh, the next video we're going to go over that drawing process and uh, I'll be able to kind of scientifically or somewhat scientifically explain uh, what I've done, hence the, the scale here. And uh, in the next video we will finish the handles, get them fitted into the hatchet heads, um, refine them, smooth them, uh, actually apply a finish, and uh, that part of the project will be complete. All right, so uh, to be continued on the next episode, and then we have uh, a leather sheath that we need to finish up for both hatchet heads, and then the final sharpening as well for both of them. See you on the next one.